Good day everyone, Tarvish here, and today I'll be reviewing Tides of Madness, a two-player card game set in the midst of Lovecraftian lore. Tides of Madness makes for a fun, quick game meant to be played in between larger games or during breaks of games like Dungeons and Dragons. First off, let's take a look at what we have. Tides of Madness comes with 18 cards, a notepad and pencil, 20 madness tokens, and a rule sheet. The notepad itself is actually a pretty nice addition, as a number of games that I've bought that require bookkeeping leave it up to you to have your own supplies. However, I can't bring myself to use the notepad because it looks just so well made. And as a little bonus, the pencil comes sharpened. This is truly cosmic horror when the game creators give you a fully sharpened pencil. Ooh. <laughs> the Madness Tokens are your standard fare with a picture of the ever-recognizable Cthulhu's face on them. The cards, however, look fantastic. The art is beautiful, showcasing some of the most recognizable characters, races, and places in the Lovecraftian universe. The colors and imagery draw you in and help to immerse you in the universe of Cthulhu. As far as gameplay goes, there are five suits of cards. Races, Locations, Outer Gods, Great Old Ones, and Manuscripts, and each suit has three cards. There are also three cards with no suits. Certain cards have tentacles on them, which, when you use them, give you madness. Cards have requirements to earn victory point totals on them, such as Yog sothoth giving you seven victory points for each location card you have, or the Necronomicon's ability to give you one victory point for every madness point you have. The game is split into three rounds where characters choose a card, swap cards, choose a new card, and repeat the steps until all the cards are chosen. The chosen cards are then flipped, and you count up the amount of madness and victory points you've managed to gain by combining cards between both players. After the first round, you choose one card to keep and discard the rest. You repeat the next round just like the first round, except this time you keep the first card that you kept from the original round. Once the second round is over, you keep a second card and discard the rest. Now you have two cards that you've kept, one from the first round and one from the second. The third round is played out the same way as the first two. If at this point no one has nine madness, which makes you lose the game automatically regardless of which turn it is, the person with the most victory points wins at the end of the third round. The real challenge comes in trying to play your opponent, giving them cards and hoping they don't take any of the ones that you need when they come back to you. Do you risk grabbing cards that give you madness and more powerful abilities, or do you try to get a majority in a specific suit of cards? My friends and I have had a lot of fun playing three games at a time. The information given on the box says one game should last 20 minutes, but we've found that you can play three games in maybe 10 to 15 minutes. And that's with us joking around about madness and monsters, the combos we failed to pull off, the combos we did manage to pull off, and other things. The game is fun for the 15 to 20 minutes you play it, but the limited card pull and basic structure of the game can cause it to grow stale if played for too long. Using it for what I see as its intended purpose, that is to play during breaks of D&D &D or in quick rounds at a party, cons, or movies, it makes for a fun time fill. At $11, it's definitely worth adding to your collection. If you're a fan of the Cthulhu universe, definitely pick up a copy and keep it ready to share with your friends. I hope you all enjoyed this quick look at Tides of Madness. If you have any other horror-based games you think I should give a look, let me know so I can check them out and let you know my thoughts on them. Thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great day. Stay positive.